Well, as the clashes in Israel intensify with Israeli regiments poised to enter Gaza for what could be weeks of sustained urban warfare, President Biden continues to push for over $100 billion in emergency spending, with some of that money sent to support Israel's battle against the Hamas terrorist organization. But, but, there are growing concerns in both chambers of Congress over the president's effort to link support for Israel to more than $60 billion in additional funding for Ukraine. Would such a link delay getting the urgently needed help to Israel? Joining me now to discuss this and more is Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas. He serves on four committees, including the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs, as well as the Senate Budget Committee. Senator Marshall, welcome back to the program. Tony, it's great to see you again. Well, you've been the leader of the Senate effort to keep support for Israel separate from other spending. I mean, when you look at the bulk of this $60 billion going to Ukraine on top of everything else we've given them, this is a little controversial. Could this delay the needed support that Israel is uh, looking to us for? You nailed it, Tony. Uh, once again, President Biden has found a way to, to take something that could unify Congress and to divide us. You know, I'm sure like you, since my earliest days, I remember my mom, my Sunday school teacher saying, we stand beside Israel. And Israel needs to know that we unequivocally stand beside them. But the same cannot be said about the Ukraine funding. As I kind of paint the big picture here for your listeners, I want to just point out that President Reagan gave us peace through strength, but Joe Biden is giving us war through weakness. And that's where we are right now. We have two different situations. In Israel, what we have is this Hamas army of terror viciously, brutally, savagely attack the people of Israel. We have a war there that will probably last weeks, maybe months, but this is a war for the sake of humanity. The situation in Ukraine, much different. That's the war that's going to probably last seven, eight, or nine years. It's going to cost a trillion dollars of American uh, dollars as well. And we don't all support it. And I can tell you that President Biden's bill is dead on arrival on the House side. There's even less support for the Ukraine funding. So Joe Biden's policy is going to slow down the process. We have a very clear understanding of what Israel wants to do. They want to eliminate the threat of, of Hamas. That means they want to clean out Gaza from being under the thumb of Hamas. We don't have the same clarity when it comes to Ukraine. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, Tony. Uh, again, there's a very clear stated mission is that we need to eliminate Hamas. And again, this is a battle for the future of, hum of humanity. Ukraine, it's not quite as black and white right now. Uh, so, and, and then we haven't you know, touched on Iran. I just want to touch on R Iran really quickly here, that Iran is the head of the snake. There's no moral clarity coming out of the president when it comes to Iran either. They are the financier. They're the puppeter. They're the armor. They're the ones that, that direct all these uh, proxy wars that are going on right now. And that's the bigger picture is we need to snap back all of our maximum sanctions onto Iran right now. We may have to even have some type of a retaliation when they attack our American troops as well. Remember, Iran's just another bully, but we're going to have to hit them in the nose at some point and let them know that, that we're not going to stand for this. We're not going to stand as Hezbollah and their other puppets get into this battle. Uh, Senator Marshall, uh, let's talk about that for just a moment. You you sit uh, on, on one of the money committees. We You, you track where this money is going. You just mentioned the $6 billion that we unfroze. Now, it has not gone into their hands yet, but they know it's there in the bank. Um, but then look at the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, which has received billions of dollars from the United States. To me, this looks schizophrenic. We're, we're fighting them on one hand, but giving them money on the other. Right. And Tony, there's more aid to Hamas in this particular legislation of Joe Biden's as well. Um, let's think about what's happened under President Joe Biden. I, I don't know about, about you, but I don't think you can be pro-Israel and pro-Iran. You have to choose one or the other. So under Joe Biden, he's empowered their nuclear weapon program. He's uh, uh, unfrozen this $6 billion that you mentioned. Three months ago, he unfroze $10 billion. And he's now allowing them to sell $1 billion of oil every week. 
The final point I'll make is this, is that under Joe Biden, Iran's reserves have went from $6 billion to $60 billion. This is what's happening under Joe Biden's watch. He's allowed Iran to once again to be a force, to be a power. Um, and again, you have to choose one or the other. You have to choose Israel or you have to choose Iran. Iran is the one that says death to Israel, death to America. Uh, Senator, if I'm not mistaken, there was a, earlier today a classified briefing on the threat from Iran. And I know you, you've got to be careful in what you share, but uh, are you concerned about the, the threat of Iran as we stand with Israel. Could we see this spin into a global conflict? You know, absolutely it could be. Iran does not know if this president has any red lines. And I'm afraid that they, they could be right. And that's why I'm saying we need to retaliate and teach them a lesson. We need to hit the bully across the nose really hard the next time they do anything whatsoever. So as long as we have ships in harm's way, which we do, um, you know, it's very possible that one of those drones or one of those underwater attacks get through. So, so of course, I'm very, very concerned about the situation there. Um, and again, here's Joe Biden leading with weakness. We have war because of Joe Biden's weakness. I mean, we've seen attacks on our troops in uh, Syria and Iraq since this conflict with Hamas has begun. And, and so we know it's real. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think under the, the Trump administration, uh, even under the Bush administration, you would see that type of response to send a message. I'm not quite sure, as you said, what the red line is, what is the trigger for the Biden administration to actually act in the interest of the United States. Yeah. Tony, we're all looking for that red line. We're looking some type of clarity from this president, some type of priorities. What what exactly do you do you or I even yet understand what the president's priorities under this situation? To me, the priorities should be very, very clear. Is number one, we want to get all the Americans back safely. We need to secure our southern border, by the way. We need to cut the head off the snake of Iran and we need to eliminate Hamas. Have you heard that clarity yet come from Joe Biden? We need a president who's going to put our first, our best, uh, best foot forward to stand with peace through strength. Look, I'm not a warmonger. I don't right. want this war. But let's let's face it. Over the next days, weeks, and months, it's going to get really ugly there in the Gaza Strip. And Israel needs to know that we have their back. That unequivocally, that we're going to stand with them. And why other TV stations may be showing the horrors of war. Uh, I would just close with saying what President Eisenhower said is that that I hate the atrocities of war as only a soldier who lived it can. But the blood of every person from October 7 onward, the blood of every person, every innocent civilians is on the hands of Hamas and Iran. Right. You're absolutely right. Uh, I, I would say I wish this president had the same clarity on issues such as this as he does for abortion the whole LGBTQ agenda and climate. That seems to be the only three issues this administration has clarity on. It's uh, frightening. Um, Senator Roger Marshall, always great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Tony.